So the purpose of this video is to help out current owners of the Minifix or people who might be thinking about getting into the Minifix because of the, the looming issue of light primer strikes with this platform. So first, let's talk about the primers and what Q tells you to use with this gun. So Q flat out tells you it's not designed for hard cup military style primers. So what does that mean? Uh, I've got a bunch of CCI 41 primers, which are the hard cup military style primers. So the military style primers, the idea is they have a thicker piece of metal on the back end of them and the distance between where the back end of the primer is and where the firing pin has to protrude through it in order to set it off is farther on the military style primers. So they're a little more challenging to set off. Reason for that is because the idea of a floating firing pin on certain, on like an AR-15, where the firing pin is not held in place by a spring that keeps it back. When the bolt closes on an AR-15, the firing pin is free floating. <clears throat> so if you chamber around, a lot of times there's a little dent in the primer from where the firing pin was able to just slide forward inside the firing pin chamber inside the bolt and make a little indentation in the primer. So hard military style primers for 5.56, 223, 300 blackout. That's the idea. Um, there's also small rifle primers for AR-15s that are not the hard military style primers that have a shorter distance for them to detonate. So the firing pin doesn't need to protrude as far and they have a softer piece of metal on the back. So that's the two different examples of primers we're really talking about here. So Q says, don't use the military style ones. Okay, so I got this mini fix knowing that, knowing that I wasn't gonna probably be able to use my CCI 41 primers, but I have a bunch of CCI 400 primers, the regular small rifle primers. So what I did is I just, I took it to the range when I first got it. And for reference, I got this a couple months ago. So it's, it's a new production version. It was just produced and got to a distributor. I bought it. Um, so I took it to the range with a bunch of my loads that I already had loaded up with the CCI 41, the military style harder primers. And I had probably 30 to 40% failure to failure to ignite and they were light strikes. So I took those home, those, those failure to failure to fires. And I put them in my Sheridan case gauge. This is my this is my Sheridan case gauge right here. I dropped them in just to see because I, so the background on on my experiment. I read I read some forums and people talking about they think it's speculating that they think it's a head spacing problem or primer hardness etc. So I wanted to figure out exactly what was going on. So I took the ones that failed to fire, dropped them in my Sheridan case gauge. So this is a reloading tool basically it. After you load around or before you load around, you could drop a brass case into this gauge and it tells you the distance that you're going to fit within the head spacing spec for the 300 blackout cartridge for Sammy, Sammy spec. So 300 blackout head spaces off of the shoulder. So what that means is, let's go up here really quick. So here's your barrel. Here's your cartridge. So the shoulder of the cartridge is this part right here. And the shoulder, when you put it into the chamber, the shoulder will rest against the barrel on that spot right here. And that's inside the chamber, rough, rough drawing, but that's basic, basically how the, the cartridge sits in the chamber. So when the shoulder hits, you have the distance here, and that's this distance. And then you have a closed bolt, which is a fixed spot where the bolt contacts the chamber and, and the barrel end. And it sits there and it has to be in the same spot. So you have a variance in this cartridge that is, that is, that's really what head spacing boils down to. Distance between where the bullet will sit all the way forward and where the bolt face or breech face comes in contact with the back of the case. So like I said, there's an allowable spec, there's a range where that's tolerance, okay, and where guns will work. So that's the idea behind this case gauge. It, it shows you where you sit in that spec and it has a couple different levels if you can see right here of height that shows kind of where you're at so it gives you an idea when you're loading loading or if you want to test some ammo and see where it sits is the idea so i took those fired rounds that failed to go off or i mean attempted to fire put them in my case gauge and all of them were sitting at the low end so they plunked in really far i don't know if you can see it on camera but this one this one actually there's this lowest lowest spot on this gauge this one sits above that spot a little bit. 
So this one's above the bottom spec for for three hundred blackout by Sammy standards. The ones that failed to fire all drop at this line or below this line. So they they'll all go off in my sugar weasel and my BCM and stuff like that. Those rounds will fire, and I took them out and I shot them in another gun. They worked just fine. Um, so okay, so I proved that cool. They were the ones that didn't fire were at the low end of the specification for the length of a 300 AAC cartridge by Sammy. Okay, solve that. Now, what I did was, the next thing I did was just at home here, I took a case and I, I took a bunch of my uh, prepped cases, dropped them in this case gauge till I found one that was really low. It sat below the line. So it's definitely at the low end, the bleeding edge of the low end of, of length for 300 AAC to be within head spacing, right? So I took that case, I primed it with one of the military style primers, one of the CCI 41s, and I hand fed it into my mini fix and closed the bolt, pulled the trigger and it failed to ignite. So I had a light strike with it. So I took that thing and I put it in my sugar weasel and pulled the trigger and it popped the primer, took the case, immediately primed it with a CCI 400, which is one of the softer cup, non-military style primers. And again, this is a low a low round so it's short so the distance the distance for the firing pin to interact with the primer if it's short is farther because it'll sit further this way so the, the striker and the, the firing pin have a harder time working to hit that primer so with the cci 400 with the the case length that's short it ignited i put in my mini fix closed the breech pulled the trigger primer went off so i took that as a whole lot of data that the CCI 400 primers are gonna work even when the spacing on the round is short or the length of the actual casing from shoulder to the back of the case is short. So it's on the very short end of head space, the firing pin has to go a lot farther to hit it and it's a lighter cup. So I figured I'm probably gonna have really good luck with the CCI 400. And lo and behold, I loaded up a ton of ammo with it for testing You know, in increments, I went to the range about five, six times with it so far with the CCI 400s in various loadings, working up subs, checking velocity and stuff like that. And I've had a hundred percent ignition with the CCI 400 primers, no matter what the length, no matter what the length on the case is. So I feel pretty confident in saying that what Q tells you on their site that they don't recommend the mini fix for use with uh, hard military style primers. I feel like that's just something you got to accept if you want to get into the mini fix. Again, I noticed that I did have I did have some ignition with the hard military style primers. It was just only on the cases that were longer in spec. So you'll have the shoulder sitting against the shoulder of the case, the cartridge sitting against in your chamber. It just extends farther back when the case is longer. So with it extended farther back with a longer case, it would set off with the CCI 41. It was fine, but the shorter ones. Wouldn't work unless I use the CCI 400. So again, probably just something you have to accept. And if you're if you're curious, here's the reason why. So the way the way the mini fix works is it's not hammer fire. So it's it's a different different setup than we're used to with AR-15s, right? Where when the bolt gets pushed to the rear, it pushes the hammer down against the spring and cocks the hammer. When you pull the trigger. It releases the hammer and it comes up and interacts with the firing pin inside the bolt. And that's what sends the firing pin forward. And the minifix is different. It's a striker assembly, more like a Glock, I guess you could consider. And the way that striker gets set is on the lift of the bolt, the vertical lift. So when you lift up on the bolt, it cocks the striker inside of there. And then the firing pin is loaded under a spring right after that. So I'm sure, I'm just assuming here that what Q did was... They found a bolt lift that they were happy with, a pressure of bolt lift that they were happy with, because you could make you could make the stri the striker spring heavier, but what you get when you do that is you're going to have you're going to have a harder bolt lift. So they probably just trial and error found a bolt lift that they're happy with, and then that's the striker spring they stuck with. So is what it is. Not sticking up for Q. This isn't emotionally charged. I just that's that's the facts of the matter with Q mini fix and light primer strikes. Um, not sticking up for Q, but Q is my experience with Q has been great. I've only had to deal with them one time. I got several Q guns. I love them. I think I think they're cool. They got the cool factor. 
they got the looks factor they all work really well except this doesn't work with hard primers which again is stated on their site so full disclosure was done by q um but so my my experience with them i bought all these guns i own i bought my q cans um i also bought uh, a stock for this file the form one so i could make this an sbr and the cheek piece that's on the stock there's two one of the bolts on the bottom of it was stripped out and it, it just spins. So I couldn't remove the bolts for adjusting the cheek piece. Um, and I shot him an email, said, Hey, my thing, like it's not working. And they said, okay, cool. What's your address? And they mailed me one out without hesitation. They didn't make me show them pictures or any kind of stuff. They just, they just trusted and didn't hesitate. Within a week I had, I had the new parts. So I think that's pretty good. My opinion. Um, haven't had to send a gun back, so that's all I can speak for, but so far so good with Q. Uh, I hope this video helps somebody out. And again, I, I was compelled to make this video because I read a bunch of forum stuff and a bunch of posts and I hadn't found anything definitive. And I want to give this information out in case you're thinking about buying a mini fix so you know what you're getting into, or if you already have a mini fix and you can't get it working. Um, again, if you liked if you like the content of the video please do me a favor hit the thumbs up button hit the subscribe button it really helps me out thanks for watching have a nice day